Hello, my name is Grace. Hello, my, my name is Michael. You're watching the Horse, Horse Rockets, Rockets Academy. Academy. And this, this is our, our show. show. We'll take time, do what you're gonna do, and just smile, and you're gonna see it through. Your wings are gonna sprout and lift you off the ground. No, oh, no, take time, do what you're gonna do, just smile, you're gonna see it through. Your wings are gonna sprout and you will learn to fly. Hello, I'm Eliza. I'm Jake, and you're watching Horse Rockets, filmed in beautiful Bavaria. This is episode 11, and we call it Fake FAQ. Here at Horse Rockets Academy, we like to create an environment that encourages us to be producers. And right now we're producing the most popular seen space-themed equestrian education YouTube video series in the world. Oh yeah. This is the show you should be watching as you start off your homeschooling week. Don't be in intimidated that our show sounds like it's for a Nikki audience. A niche audience, right. I mean, really, some people think that our space-themed equestrian educational YouTube video series is only enjoyable if you enjoy space, horses, education, and YouTube. That's totally not the case. Our show is made for people, and so if you're a person, you'll like our show. Regardless, in this episode, we're going to pretend that we have a large audience and answer questions we think they would ask. Great idea. That's why when the audience does show up, we don't have to cover the same ground again. Good point. But now it's time to tell you what we've got planned for this episode. First off, let's say something about our audience again. What do you want to say? You may not realize this, but our audience is full of folks who prove that our regular per people can do amazing things. Right now, we're not asking you to do the impossible. Just sit back, gather your crew together, and watch the show. We think you're going to really enjoy it. As always, we're going to start with Rainey's Riddles. After Rainey's Riddles, it's Daniel's Hunt in History with Elijah. Then... We'll get on to our main segment and our Horse Rockets High Five. After that, we're going to present the, the our weekly scorecard. Our scorecards are a more detailed review of some of the popular homeschooling curriculum. I'm excited. So, Eliza, what are we waiting for? Just six little words. And what are they? Now it's time for Ray's Riddle. Thanks, Eliza. Today, Grace is joining me. I wonder if the audience knows what that means. It means they get two riddles. That's right. Both of our riddles come from popsicle sticks. Why didn't... Okay, Grace. First. Ladies first. Why didn't Emily go to South America for summer? What's the answer? They'll have to watch it later in the show. Good idea. My riddle is what had four eyes but cannot see. Back to you, Eliza. I wonder what the answer will be. The only way we're going to find out is if we keep moving forward with the show. Sounds good. Now it's time to Dale's Hunt in the History with Elijah. Eliza. And thanks for joining me again, Elijah. Go ahead and start us off. Will do. This week begins with Monday, June 9th. In 68 AD, the Roman Emperor Nero committed suicide after quoting from Homer's Iliad. On June 10th, 1916, the Arab Revolt began. This revolt was led by a British officer named T.E. Lawrence. His adventures made him so popular that he became known as Lawrence of Araba. On June 11th, 1184 BC, Odysseus and his men emerged from the Trojan horse and won a great victory over the city of Troy. On June 12th, 1987, U.S. President Ronald Reagan 
challenge. Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down the Berlin Wall. On June 13th in 1983, the spaceship Pioneer 10 became the first man-made object to leave the central solar system. This week's historical salute goes to Sergeant Patrick Gass. Sergeant Gass served as a sergeant for the Lewis and Clark expedition during the 8,000 mile trek. Though he worked as a carpenter, he was the first person after the trek to have his journals published as a book. Sergeant Gass, this salute goes is for you. Back to you, Eliza. Thank you, Dan, for this week's Hunt in the History. What's your favorite day of history this week, Eliza? I like June 11th, the Trojan horse. Ooh, the Trojan horse. That's a good one. And now it's time for our main segment. That's right. So in this episode, we're going to pretend to sort through a large stack of emails and answer questions we think people ought to be asking the show. We should tell our audience that if they actually do want to send us any an email, they would write us using horserockets at gmail.com. All right. Let's get on to the fake FAQ. What's our first question, Dad? This one comes from Leopold. So will you take it? He wants sure. to know how we came up with the name for the show. We came up with the name for a show when my parents decided we should name our school. Okay. For homeschooling, Daniel and I really enjoyed horse riding. Rain just started, and we rather enjoyed rockets. And Rainy was the one who put them t the ideas together. We voted, and horse rockets won. Besides, spacehelicopters.com was already taken. Do you have a question for me? Sure do. This one's from Marcus. He wants us to describe how we make the show. Okay, sure. First, the show starts with an idea. I usually pitch the ideas to Eliza, and if they stick, we start working on the script. I'll do the research for Daniel's hunt into history, and he and I will rehearse his section. Then, Eliza and I will rehearse and finalize the script for our main topic, like we're doing today. Rainy gets to eat a popsicle somewhere in the process, and we add his riddle to the show. Once that's all done, we start filming, usually youngest to oldest. The whole process of filming the show takes about two hours, but it's time well spent with the kids. If you're interested in a behind-the-scenes video, let us know in the comments below. Do I get the next question? Yep, I've got a good run right here. This one comes from Penelope. She writes, if you had a pet zebra, what would you name it? Does she? Did she ask if I had a pet zebra? I love, 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 love to have a pet zebra. I would name it Zebe, though. Kind of obvious. I even have a stuffed animal named Zebe on Webkins. Cool. Okay, so what's our next question? This one's come from Barnabas. Barnabas, okay, yeah. What does he ask? It asks, why is Jake so handsome? Oh, we get this question all the time. We do? <laughs> yeah, there's no way this question is rigged. No way at all? No. Okay, now, on to the answer. My handsomeness comes from a calculated blend of eating what I want, exercising when I feel like it, and from a chance encounter with an Omnithrocnus, an Acticus, and a magic droop. Yeah, that, that's totally believable. All right, all right. Well, at least here's one that sounds legitimate. Eliza, what is your favorite subject? My favorite subject is reading because I'm an eighth grade level reader. Okay. All right, here's another one for you as well. Dear Eliza, if a train leaves Denver at 12 o'clock p.m., traveling at 55 miles an hour with four hamsters on board, and another train leaves New York at 3 p.m., traveling at 35 miles per hour with 11 donkeys on board, when will they meet, and what will the conductor serve the gerbils and donkeys when they meet for dinner? Eliza, oh. I think this is a fake question. No way, this is not a fake question. Are you sure? Yep, 
tons of kids ask me for help with their homework all the time. I can handle this. Okay, then what's the answer? Assuming they're heading in the same direction, it's easy to figure out. Everyone knows the proper ratio of 1,777 miles between New York and Denver and two-hour time difference zone. The two-hour time difference zone means that the train in New York leaves one hour later than train in Denver. Okay, so you lost me here at how you knew the, different, the distance or the approximate distance between New York and Denver. Well, then I'll lo really lose you at this point. There are two different start times and asking when they'll meet. The train from Denver will, most, will be traveling 19 and 45 minutes when they meet, and the train from New York will only be traveling 18 hours and 45 minutes. They'll meet up when they meet up. They should happen somewhere on the west side, east side of South Bend, India, which is the central time zone. The local time they will be 7.45 a.m. the following day. Wow, Eliza, you did all that in your head? You're a genius. Yep, total genius. Do I get to have ice cream? No. But speaking of food, what does the conductor serve the animals for dinner when they meet? Dad, seriously? Yeah, seriously? It is so obvious I am not telling you it. It is so obvious, Dad. It's simple. It's even written down there. I even answered it for you. Why don't you think about it during the high five? This week, I got married during me. This is the part of the show that we share something or someone we found that's worthy of the grand status of high fivedom. This week's high five goes to Lizzie Bennet Diaries. The Lizzie Bennet Diaries was made from the modern retelling of Jane Austen's classic Pride and Prejudice. It is on YouTube, and they have done over a hundred episodes. They are also such great actors and actresses that you start thinking it's real. Hey, I even thought it was real until my dad told me it was acting. It is awesome, and it got Eliza to read the book. Well, I'm on chapter 11. That's impressive, since she got it only a few days ago. The Lizzie Bennet Diaries, this high five goes to you. Here it is. Now it's time to reveal our curriculum scorecard. Homeschoolers have different interests when they buy a book for their curriculum. They want to know how much prep time it takes for each lesson and how long the book is going to last. Wouldn't it be nice to know ahead of time if the book was religious or secular? Is it going to adopt to different learning styles? We've got scorecards for curriculums up on horserockets.com slash scorecards that help answer these questions and others. This week, we're pleased to announce the scorecard for Saxon Math Intermedia 3. If you've got experience with this book, please visit the scorecard page and you'll find a link to contribute your own feedback. We really appreciate you being able to... Dad, we got a problem. What's the problem? We're talking too much. Can't you see the person right there wants the answer to Rainey's riddle? Oh, I'm sorry. We'll cut it off now. Here you go. YouTubers, have you figured out why Emily didn't go to South America for summer? Mask or drum roll, please. The answer is she heard it was chilly. <laughs> have you figured out what has four eyes but cannot see? Mask or drum roll, please. The answer is Mississippi. <laughs> Thank you guys always. If you've got a riddle to share, put it be. Put it in the comments below. Well, we're at the end of the show. Hurry, you are running out of time to give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video. If you're really feeling generous, you want to help out the show by clicking the Amazon link on the notes below. Oh, wait, I get it now. 
You don't serve breakfast at 7.45 in the morning. Good one, Liza. Ladies and gentlemen, my dad has just been schooled. All right, theme music. Hit the music! We'll take time, do what you're gonna do, and just smile, you're gonna see it through. Your wings are gonna sprout and lift you off the ground. This week we're pleased to announce a scorch card for Saxon Math Intermission 3. We're pleased to announce a scorecard for Saxon Mass Interpret... Interpreting... Three. 